how do colored coins work? I've been following the BISC, the Centralized Exchange and Organization Experiment. They're using colored coins on the Bitcoin network to incentivize traders, contributors, and arbitrators. I understand how colored coins work at a very high level, but I haven't found a good technical explanation about how it's implemented. Can you explain how colored coins really work? Um, there's a chapter in uh, Advanced Transactions in Mastering Bitcoin, which you can find of course, for free on GitHub, that explains how colored coins really work. But the, the thing is, colored coins uh, is not a specific technology. It's a concept. And it's implemented in a number of different ways. There are a number of implementations that implement the concept of colored coins. The idea of colored coins is really simple. You take a very small amount of Bitcoin, um, usually in the thousands of Satoshis, um, which doesn't have any real monetary value. And what you do is um, you mark it in some way that can be recognized by a specially configured wallet, so that that information can be tracked forward um, through transactions. And you mark it as having special meaning in addition to its monetary value. In practical terms, think of me taking a dollar bill and stamping on this, this is uh, redeemable for one copy of Mastering Bitcoin with a little rubber stamp. It's still worth a dollar if you spend it at the grocery store, but now it's worth well $34 if you uh, get a free copy of Mastering Bitcoin um, from a bookstore that's participating in my colored dollar scheme. Um, and so, of course, the stamp would be orange because that's the Bitcoin color. Now, that's an example of a practical example of the colored coin concept. The underlying currency still has the same value, but that value is really small, uh, or really small relative to the thing I've stamped on it. And you need that because otherwise, people will spend it to buy gum, and and then it's lost in circulation, and people don't know that it's special. But the thing that's stamped on it can be stamped in a number of ways. And there's a number of protocol implementations of colored coins. Some use special public key addresses um, that mean something. Some use special multi-sig addresses that mean something. Uh, essentially, they construct scripts or put information into a transaction. So when you initialize a colored coin, what you do is you first stamp all of the Satoshis. And then from that transaction, which is the genesis transaction of the colored coin, you can then spend small amounts uh, with additional Bitcoin transactions. And a wallet that's configured uh, correctly can trace back to the uh, transaction where you created the colored coin and see what kind of colored coin is. Now, one of the easier ways to do that is using the op return uh, script operand. And what the op return script operand does is it allows you to introduce, um, I believe, uh, 80 bytes of information in, as an output in a transaction. And that 80 bytes could be a hash, uh, or it could be a binary encoded message that can be read by a wallet that's configured to read it. And one of the colored coin protocols does exactly that. So you have an op return followed by a special code that says, hey, this is the colored coin protocol followed by, and this coin is marked in this way with so many units that are divisible in this way. And here's a URL that tells you um, how to look it up. And based on that information, a wallet can display interesting things about it, a name, for example, maybe even uh, an icon for that colored coin, and then know how to spend it in a way that maintains that information going forward. So that's how colored coins work in this particular case. There is some implementation details, like what do you, what does the wallet put in the op return? How does it encode that information? There's a whole specification you can read uh, on different forms of colored coin implementations that tells you how the information is encoded. And if you want, you can go and look in the blockchain at a raw transaction that created a colored coin. Uh, use the colored coin wallet to create a colored coin, and then go in the blockchain and look at that transaction, and look at the raw data in it. And uh, you should be able to unravel it and say, oh, right, so this is the little uh, encoding that they're using, and it matches the specification. You can read it, essentially, by unraveling the hex or binary encoding.
Dean asks, can colored coins be used to track donations? I'm working on a platform for political funding and donations. I'd like to use Bitcoin exclusively. What would be super cool is if we could color the coins so we can see how they are used forever after they leave our donation platform. Is the case that this is possible with colored coins or with something else, or is this not possible? If this is possible, could it be used with the Lightning Network? So, Dean, to answer your uh, question, this is possible, and you can use colored coins in order to track uh, donations. Um, however, um, depending on how users behave with these colored coins, they could obfuscate and uh, try to um, hide where donations are going by using standard mixing techniques and things like that, effectively removing the color from the coins. Um, now, assuming that those receiving the donations don't want to do that, this is an effective way of doing it. I know of at least one other project that's doing this, um, which is the uh, BitGive Foundations project, uh, GiveTrack, which is trying to do that for charitable donations. And can it be used with a Lightning Network? Not at the moment. Um, you can't use colored coins uh, or send colored coins within the Lightning Network, but it's possible that that could be a capability that gets added later on. Uh, there's no reason why you can't theoretically do that in the future.